Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being taken down to its nuts and bolts. If Lore is to be believed, and he will not shut up until you tell him you believe him, so I guess he is to be believed, one of the largest and strongest empires on your little ball of dirt was founded by a fratricidal brother, I guess former brother, since he killed his brother, who was raised by literal wolves, or literally raised by wolves. Depends on how the myth goes. And it went on to become this, like, almost globe-spanning empire. Kind of cool. The origin story is cool, at least, so at least there's that. But anyways, there's your Terran Empire of Rome. And then there's the Romulan Empire. Not to be confused, they are totally destroyed and totally distinct, even though one was modeled after the other, technically. Apparently, someone wanted space Romans for your James Tiberius Kirk to go up against. The original Star Trek series did have a certain degree of style to it. And speaking of style, since that's like the worst segue ever, this week we are going to be talking about the Romulan Empire's dip 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 diddly do ha um durable mother what the did mm, that thing anyways that thing can be known as a warbird a battle cruiser a bravo type warbird or in my case because i am just not going to be able to handle its original name a diddly do ha also, no, this is not the same kind of warbird that the Romulans used back during the original series. It's so much bigger. You honestly have no idea how big this f***er is. I mean, seriously, y'all know how big the Galaxy Glass starships are, right? I mean, there's actually another video that I will hopefully link to when I make this video about just how big the Galaxy Glass starships are and how kind of underpopulated they might be, which is kind of weird and creepy, but anyways. But still... Galaxy-class starships for the Federation are f***ing huge. Great. The diddly doo ha is bigger. In fact, I haven't honestly checked the numbers yet, but I'm reasonably certain a Galaxy-class starship can actually fit between the two plates of the diddly doo ha Seriously, it's that big. But, by the same token, the diddly doo ha does have those two plates. And, I mean, yes, judging interstellar starships by their quote-unquote displacement doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But at least the Galaxy class has less space between all of its bits. Whereas the dorky dumbass has this, like, gaping hole in the middle of it. Why? Those two plates are not actually a design feature that occurred previously in Romulan warships that I'm aware of, or after Rom in Romulan warships that I'm aware of. It is a singular example of this specific style. Now, yes, absolutely, the Romulans totally had a hard-on about winged-looking ships. They were definitely into that aesthetic. But when you're going to, like, smush two birds together and have them, like, touch tips and... No, why don't I just say that? Anyways, a certain gentleman by the name of Andrew Probert initially designed the Romulan Warbird that you see before you right now. He actually designed it very, very differently than it showed up in the television series, serieses. And it makes it really difficult to talk about because certain features like, say, the disruptor emitter that you know on the front leading edge of the diddly dorky it was meant originally to be the navigational deflector. That's what he meant that funny little shape on the leading edge of the ship to be. And then the art department got hold of it, and then the prop department got hold of it, and then the special effects department got hold of it. And all of a sudden, that was a disruptor cannon slash photon torpedo launcher. Pretty much all the weapons of the Warbird came out of that funny little spot on its leading edge. I don't know why you would design it like that, aside from lazy artists. And no, I'm not calling Mr. Probert lazy. I'm calling the people who got a hold of his designs lazy and what they did with them. His stuff was cool. Their stuff was not. This is simple. Because seriously, why would you run a disruptor cannon and a photon torpedo out of the same tube? That doesn't make any sense. 
I mean, yes, typically photon torpedoes are electromagnetically launched out of their launching systems, and disruptor cannons could use some sort of electromagnetic function for firing them as well, too, because we don't really know a whole lot about how they work or what they necessarily do aside from disrupt the bonds between atoms, molecules, something like that. But regardless, you could maybe use the same firing systems for both, but why would you? Why would you put them right next to each other? You're basically telling the bad guys, or the people you're shooting at at least, that they just need to shoot right there, and they're going to take out like half of your ship's weapons, because all of your ship's weapons are right there. Why would you do that? Well, like I said, Mr. Probert didn't actually do that. The art department and the set department and the special effects department and blah, 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 so on and so forth, other departments did that. So we're just going to go ahead and skate right past that and talk about the other specific details of the diddly dorky doo For example, did you know that in the next generation edition of Star Trek, the diddly dorky doo is categorized as being the most advanced warship in the entire galaxy, known universe, whatever. Everything that Starfleet knows about, this thing is the most advanced. Why, you ask? Because it happens to be powered by a forced quantum singularity. Yeah, it's running off a black hole. Now, I don't know if it's ever specifically articulated whether the Romulan Empire creates these black holes for their own purposes or just goes out into the universe and harnesses them, and I'm not actually sure which is more terrifying, but still, they have a warship that is powered by a black hole. Now, I guess I should back up and talk about why that is notable in the Star Trek universe. I don't know about all the species in the Star Trek universe, but I do know that the humans and the Vulcans and the Klingons and most of the rest of the other species use something called matter-antimatter annihilation to power their ships. Basically, they do E equals MC squared times two, because they're taking matter, exposing it to antimatter, both of those annihilate each other because that's what they do, and then you get bonus energy out of that entire process. And the Humi specifically focus that energy through dilithium crystals, whatever that's worth. But this is all a fairly contained reaction. If you stop putting antimatter into the intermix chamber, you stop having the reaction. You can turn it off. No big deal. On the other hand, the Romulans have a little tiny black hole. You can't turn that off. I mean, you can technically feed it less, so it will produce less power, but it's always going to be there. So guess what happens to Romulan derby dumbass warships if they take a solid strike to the engineering section? Yeah, they done. They, they pretty much eat themselves. It's bad. And what's weird about all of this is that there's no significant, like, improvement for shifting from matter-antimatter reaction to quantum singularities. The diddly doo is strictly slower than a galaxy-class starship. Simply slower. And if it tries to keep up with a galaxy-class starship, it is in danger of burning out its warp drive. That seems like a good idea. On top of that, even if the, the quantum singularity doesn't, like, escape its containment and devour the entire ship, if that containment vessel takes any damage at all, or if the ship can't keep up the containment field precisely perfectly, then its cloaking device is useless. All right, I forgot to mention probably that this is, since it is a Romulan warbird, it does in fact have a cloaking device, which does actually like conceal the ship from basically all sensors, including your Mark I Mod Zero eyeballs, and makes the ship basically disappear. As long as the ship doesn't want to shoot or have shields or go at high warp. There are details. But even if the ship doesn't shoot or turn on its shields, which it technically can't while it's cloaked, or go to high warp, which it technically can while it's cloaked, although it will be very, very visible after that, if the containment vessel for the Singularity has any problem at all, the Singularity starts like sending off this massive magnetic flag of, hey, here I am! And really, out in the wild, micro-singularities do not wander around. So, yeah, the dibbly doo is totally telegraphing its location when that happens. Okay, so, it can't outrun a galaxy-class starship. What about outgunning them? Well, that's harder to quantify specifically. Um, technically, two intrepid-class starships, you know, the Voyager 
series of starships are outclassed by a single dibbly doo ha But they're just intrepids. Those aren't even in the same category as when the Federation was pretending it didn't make warships. The, the Voyager Intrepid series were literally exploration craft that were barely armed. I mean, yeah, they had quantum torpedoes and all that other crap, but all that was retrofitted onto the Galaxy class as well. And let's face it, the Galaxy class is a goddamn beast. So, no, um, the upshot is basically that the dibbly dorky dumbass here is basically a parody with a single Galaxy class. They will probably mutually annihilate each other, but it won't be a clear win. And this just feeds into the whole problem of the whole myth that the Federation is not a military outfit. I mean, the Romulans did not try to play any stupid games. The Romulans were out to win wars. They weren't out to explore. They weren't out to find new civilizations. They weren't out to do f all. They were out to win wars. And they built a purpose-built warship that... Uh, is within enough range of Delta with a supposed exploration craft that it makes you kind of worried what the Federation was doing in the background, doesn't it? I mean, the dibbly doo -ha has like four times the internal volume of the Galaxy class and all of these other things and a micro-singularity and all these other things and it's still just barely able to take on a single Galaxy class. Maybe. It might win, but it won't like it. And this is, again, considered to be the most technologically advanced starship in the next generation era. Only because of its power plant. And I just, seriously, how in the fuck did the Federation convince anyone else that they were not a military organization in order to build a warship, yes, the Galaxy Classes were warships, that large and that automated and that capable, and no one cared? I mean, seriously, with a crew of a thousand, the Enterprise is just running on freaking bots. I mean... Major Barrett, I guess, is running most of the ship, which is cool. No argument there. Of course, on the flip side, the diddly doo -ha and the Romulan Empire absolutely despise the entire concept of anything that might even remotely approximate an artificial intelligence. So that massive honker of a warship is almost entirely manually run or run by discrete separated individual computers that have no hope of ever achieving anything even approximating sentience or sapience and if they do they will be shot on sight and for those of y'all who were not watching the most recent star trek picard atrocity that's basically the upshot of the romulan empire they really 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 do not like artificial intelligence Ironically, I suppose that's something the humans of Battlestar Galactica and the Romulans of the Romulan Empire might share in common. Weird overlap right there. So yes, in Upshot, the Romulan Empire did in fact create a massive warship with this really tiny off button that totally turns the entire warship off and then collapses it down to a really tiny sphere which offends my sensibilities. Why would they do that? I mean, what's the benefit? Matter-antimatter reactions in the Star Trek universe are pretty much a standby. Everyone knows how they work. On the other hand, everyone knows how black holes work and not to f*** with them! And yet, for some reason, the Romulan Empire decided this was an outstanding source of power for their biggest, largest, most complex warship ever. That just had this massive gap in the middle of it. It made it really hard to get around. No one really knew which corridor to take to go where. No one was really sure where the shuttle bay was or where the impulse drives were or where the disruptors were. What am I supposed to be doing here right now? So, yeah. If you want a single most perfect example of style over substance, the Dadiradex is a perfect example of that. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube at the owner's expense. Have a nice day.